Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be here, gathered in your name, right in the heart of the village, Lord. We thank you that we are free to do that in our village without fear of persecution. And Lord, we pray that as we gather to worship, we will remember that you're the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and that you'll inspire us through the words that Jay shares with us later. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So our first hymn is God is working his purpose out. Ephesians 1 verses 3 to 10. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reached their fulfilment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to sing, O oh, Church, Arise and Put Your Armour On. Share with us now. 
That would be wonderful. And then after we've heard from you, after that we'll have um, some more worship and prayer, if that's okay. Praise the Lord. And thank you. Welcome. Um, most of you will not have heard or seen Jace before. Um, I've known Jace, I don't know how many years since we first met, but um, I met him lots of times in India and recently lots of time on Zoom. Um, and uh, it's a real privilege to have you with us this morning, Brother Jace. So uh, really, please do share whatever's on your heart to share with us this morning. Thank you, Brother Jim. Thank you. And thank you for the invitation, and it's good to be in, in fellowship with our brothers and sisters uh, in England. And what a joy it is, actually. Sometimes we, you know, pre, pre-COVID, we never thought that we'll be able to meet. To speak in a meeting in England, you need to get the visa and ticket and then fly down all the way, thousands of miles. But, you know, during COVID, uh, God has blessed us with technology of Zoom that we are able to this fellowship together. So it's a wonderful feeling. And it's my joy to be part of uh, the congregation this, this morning, morning in England, but here in India is uh, afternoon. I mean, close to evening, actually. So uh, I, I just wanted to uh, uh, share the picture of my family before we start so that we can, you know, get, connect with, uh, each other, and we always give uh, value to the relationship that God has given. So I just wanted to share, if that is okay with everyone, uh, my family. Uh, so this is this is my beautiful wife. Her name is Shija. Hope uh, everyone is able to see. Yeah, we can see that. Yep. Okay, okay. So we are married uh, just this July. We celebrated our, our 25th marriage anniversary. So God has been faithful uh, in our relationship. And then I think uh, just we have been blessed with one daughter. She is, oh, sorry. I just trying to share daughter's picture. And we have, and she, oh, not know why I'm not sure why that picture is not able I'm not able to show probably let me just try once again ah anyway we have been blessed with one daughter sorry for I'm not able to I don't know for what reason every time I try to pick up the file uh, just my wife's picture and my picture comes so we have been blessed <laughs> with one daughter and uh, the reason probably that she she keeps coming back to the because her daughter is much more beautiful than my wife <laughs> <laughs> she, probably she just doesn't she just doesn't want everyone to see her uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, she is 21 and she is in a different city known as bangalore and she's doing her uh, uh, uh graduation this is a final year in psychology and she wants to uh, be in the field where she can actually help people uh, in the in the in the future actually that's where she is she feels that the god is leading her to so this very small family uh, well, yes well, the Jace, one of our congregation here worked as a doctor in bangalore for some time so sorry one of our congregation worked as a doctor near Bangalore. For oh, some okay. Time. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> okay, I'll leave you to carry okay. on. Here is, here is our doctor. Hey! <laughs> uh, I'm able to share this because I took off the pic- our picture and then only this one was left, so it's showing now. So that's a beautiful doctor. And she... she uh, as a parent, as a father, I praise God that she loves the Lord and she fears the Lord. She is walking in the way, seeking God to continue to lead her in future, how she can be involved in the ministry and most probably in the field of uh, psychology, counseling and, you know, this uh, area. So okay, whenever you remember us, just keep praying. Uh, do pray for us and the ministry that God has, the burden and the call that God has given to us as a family. 
so that we continue to be faithful in what God wants us to do here in India. So I just, I'll not take much more time, but I will just want to get straight into uh, the message that God has put in my heart. Uh, uh, this is the, one of the recent uh, thoughts that God has given, had given me, and, and it's, it's related to following uh, God's heart, following Christ's heart, actually. Uh, you know, many times in, in the past, actually, I have uh, asked, I'm a person who thinks a lot. So sometimes your thoughts can actually lead you and uh, in a various ways. But many times I've thought through the purpose of my life, you know, as a believer, as servant of God, uh, is it just to know him and have a good relationship with him? Is it all about our life? You know, as a believer, as we are Christians, we can spend a lifetime worshiping him, praising him, you know, um, meditating his word, walking on his word and praying, spending time in prayer, building, building each other in the community. Is it all that I have to do in my life is a question many times I've asked. Or is there anything else that I can do? Is there anything else I can do for within being, uh, being within the community of uh, God's people, community of my brothers and sister, irrespective of place, language or, or any other barriers? Uh, the question that I have asked myself, and uh, this is a wonderful question, actually, that I wanted to present to you, my elder brothers and sister, community of elder brothers, uh, that why we are following Christ, why we are following Christ. It's a good question. And I love to ask question. I, you know, j just recently, uh, both my wife and I actually uh, completed, I mean, got the opportunity to study and completed a, a master's in divinity in one of the best colleges here in India. And it, it helped me with the, a lot of things to think, uh, critically think, and especially this question, why? So the question is why we are following Christ. A few years back, uh, while visiting one of the mission fields, I asked one of the missionaries that I was meeting and actually I was sharing, encouraging the group of pastors there and this particular missionary who was serving the Lord in one of the persecuted areas, and he was actually, uh, very recently, he was beaten up so badly, and he was left to die on the road. But God, in his miraculous ways, uh, he saved him, and he was restored. He, he, he was in the hospital for uh, almost a month, and then he was restored uh, was still not 100%, but made, made a point to come to this pastor seminar and uh, in the fellowship that we met together. And I wanted to spend some time with him to, uh, you know, just to know his heart, just to encourage him, just to, just to be encouraged by him, the way he stood for Christ, even after that uh, horrible incident where he was, you know, left to die, actually, uh, brutally beaten. And then I asked him why uh, actually you risk uh, in the ministry, why you take such a risk because he was going back to the same place where he was beaten up. And so why you need to take a risk, you can actually go to any other place. And he said, uh, Brother Jace, uh, I do understand the risk, but every time I think uh, and look at the people in that particular village, I can't stop thinking about the responsibility of sharing gospel to those people and uh, where, I mean, to, for whom he is deeply burdened. He said, I'm not able to take that vision and burden out of my mind, out of my heart. And that's why I'm just, I just want to do what God, I feel, I strongly believe God is asking me to do, to be part of the mission that God is doing there. And he believed strongly that there is something, even though he was brutally beaten and could have died, but he believed that God is in, on move and he's doing something and I have to be part of what God is doing. He wants these people to know Christ and uh, the Christ that he got to know. He wants them to taste the love of Christ that, that he had tasted. And so he wants to go and share. Well, my friends, the key to understanding why 
the mission is core part of our journey following Christ. It is in understanding how the central mission it is for Jesus and who Jesus is and what he does. You know, in John 7, 28 and 29, he says, yes, you know me and you know where I am from. I'm not here on my authority, but he who sent me is true. You do not know him, but I know him because I am from him and he sent me. I'd like to read one more verse for you all, uh, just as an encouragement from the scripture. And Jesus said, this is John again, John chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. When you have lifted the, up the son of man, then you will know that I am he and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me enough, for I always do what pleases him. For I always do what pleases him. For what purpose? I mean, when, when I talk and, and I think about following Christ or pleasing my father, for what? There has to be some purpose for why I should be involved in what God is doing. It is not something that we are doing. It is something that God is doing and he is giving us a privilege and joy of joining him in what he is doing in a greater realm that many people do not understand. But praise God and thank God that we as a community of followers of Christ, we understand that what in the spiritual realm and the greater, larger picture that we see he is doing. And, you know, he says that in John 17, verse 22, 23 says that I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. They may be one as we are one. And I see that Christ is sharing that there is a unity between him and his father, the unity in the relationship, and he wants people to enjoy that relationship with father. Just as we are united, father, as if that Christ is saying, Father, I am united with you, and I want them also to be united with you. That is the reason I am here, because you sent me, and I'm doing what I, you asked me to do. I in them, you in me, so that they may be brought in complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and I love them even as you have loved me. The reason why I should follow Christ and what I should do in, in what he is doing so that they may become one with Father, brought to complete unity. There are many people out there in the community. I'm not talking about the community within the church. I'm talking about the community outside the church where people do not know Christ. And many people they know still they are ignoring or probably refusing to accept him as father. And what is my responsibility? What is my, my role in what God is doing? The one whom I came to know. I got the privilege and joy to know him as my father. And I'm following the son Christ Jesus. And then this is my, 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 my contribution to the community where he has placed that I can do something where people can, may know his love and can come in the unity of relationship with the father. In John 17, 26 says, I've made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, that I myself may be in them. And it's, this is, I mean, it's very clearly Christ is saying that I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known so that they may know the love you have for them. You know, when talk, talking about uh, our nation, uh, India, there are, there are, there are I mean, in, in, in Indian uh, uh, numeric, we say, crores of people, hundreds and hundreds and billions of people, oh, not sorry, billion, millions of people. There are only 1.3 billion, 1.3 or one, we're getting close to 1.4 billion people here. So millions of people, uh, you know, 
still they do not know Christ. So when I look at my life, and this is how I encourage other people, my fellow brothers and my fellow uh, workers also, that what is the purpose that we are serving the Lord? Yes, it is to encourage people. Yes, it is to help people to know the gospel. Let's share the gospel. Yes, that is important. Let's, uh, let's help them to know Christ and pro provide an opportunity for them to know Christ and accept Christ, get baptized, be a part of the church. It's a wonderful story. But what after that? Is that the, the only reason what we are serving? Uh, I strongly believe it is not just for me to help and provide opportunity and continue to work hard so that more and more people come to church and be a believer. No, I believe that, that the, the way that I, God has given me opportunity to know him, to know his love for me, to get into unity with his, his, his heavenly, that the relationship with heavenly father, I want them also to know. I want they, so that they also can go further outside the church, in their community, do the same thing by following Christ, what Christ has done for them. I always encourage in our churches, you know, our job is not just to become believer and sit in the church and enjoy this wonderful, beautiful relationship of being known to Father and being known as sons and daughters of Heavenly Father, but there's much more beyond that. There is a life with a purpose and the life, the purpose act is also outside the church boundary walls in the community that I can share the Christ that I have come to know. I can share the Christ that I have tasted. I can tell them about the love of Christ that I have experienced. I, have, I can tell them about the, the life that Christ has given me through Christ I have received. I can tell them how they can make an impact in the community as I, God is helping me to be a part of his mission. Many times we miss going into the depth of the word to have a better and wider perspective of the message that John is giving in 114. The word become flesh and lived among us. Jesus was sent by the Father into this world to build his kingdom. Jesus was on a mission and he sent his disciples also on a mission. Disciples were not enjoying just the life of being, a, being called as a disciple of Jesus Christ. They were on the mission. And the mission actually probably more evident and it's kickstarted after the life of Jesus. You know, they were spread across all the world. And today we are part of the church, I believe strongly because the disciples took the gospel to outside the world, to the ends of the world. And if after thousands of years, we are here knowing Christ because they took that step. They took that decision to take gospel to make Christ known to people, to make him known and will continue to work to, to make him known. You know, uh, this, uh, this verse actually encourages me a lot. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How they then can they call on the one? This is Romans 10, 13 to 15. How then they, can they call on the one they have not believed in? How can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they, anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. What do we see here in these verses? What role we could play as a community of followers of Christ in relation to application of these verses in our life? In IET or BCG Beersheba Church of God, this is a central call. It is a central call to take the gospel to the unreached people and make Christ known to them. And we are committed to continue to work to make him known and plant a church so that church can continue to make him known in the community in the coming generation. You know, once I, I went to a village actually uh, in the last, probably just the two, three months back. And I, I was told about that when I was there visiting the village ch church, I was told that 
in that village just a few years back, there was just, there was no church at all. They never knew about Christ. And because of IET missionary sharing the gospel, I mean, thus this one person heard about Christ. And then he came to know more about Christ and to cut down the story and give you brief, he accepted Christ, went back to village and his family was not very happy uh, that he changed his faith, you know, accepted a foreign God as they say here in India. And then uh, he, he, was, he was on the fire. You know, he, he tasted something. He encon encountered Christ in spirit in his life. And he was, he was actually, you know, well, wanted to do something to make him known and the person that he has come to know, Christ. And he wanted to do something. So he started to share Christ in his village to other people in the village. And his family got, you know, completely mad at him. They actually started to persecute him. He, pers he was persecuted in many ways, but he continued to be stay to stay strong in his faith and commitment. And after going through several challenges and several time of uh, times of persecution, the situation started to change in the village because of his persistence and also his commitment in prayer for the village because he wanted the village to know Christ and wanted the village to accept Christ as he has experienced in his life. They started to welcome him. They showed people, some of the people started to show interest in knowing more about Christ. In short, many people accepted Christ in that village as their personal savior. And a church was planted and it was established. And when I was there, I was told that eight people from that church have committed their life to serve Christ. And today they are serving as missionaries in other villages. Once he was part of the church and then he, the church became a missionary sending church. People have gone out. They are not just limited within the four boundaries of the church building, but they have gone out today. They are missionary sending people. They are sending out missionaries to other parts of the region sharing gospel, making him known to the community where Christ is not known. There's another, there's another mountain church that I recently visited. Hours and hours of drive, and then again, probably one and a half hours of trekking up on the mountain, quite dangerous. At one point, not just me, but my wife was also there. And uh, I'm an adventurous lover, so I, I actually enjoy uh, those trekking. My wife is not very comfortable with that. And we came to a very narrow path and especially it was rainy season, slippery. And at one point we were quite actually afraid. I mean, to be honest, I'm a human being. So I was afraid too. <laughs> my wife. Yeah, and, I, and my wife is now, she's really healthy. Uh, she's not, you know, you, uh, even if I try to uh, help her by holding her, it would be difficult to hold her in my arms. So I told, one, I told her once, you know, you try to be healthy as much as you can, but just make sure if house is on the fire, make sure that I can lift you up and run. That's how, that's how you should be. <laughs> But she enjoys the life that God has given. She enjoys her physique that God has given. So we were quite, I mean, it was dangerous, really. It's a couple of uh, hundreds of meters, very narrow, steep path. And it, you slip and then you're down hundreds of feet rolling down. So uh, we don't want to sing the roll away, roll away kind of thing or roll down, roll down kind of song there. But I think uh, finally we got up there. After all this drive, hectic bumpy rides and then one and a half hours of trekking straight steep on the mountain up on the mountain you see small shed a temporary shed where probably around probably around less than 50 people gathered together singing and worshiping the name of the lord that gives us the joy because i was standing on the tip of that mountain I was just looking at around, it was all mountain, but terrain place, green, lushy greens, 
and up on the sky, I was wondering, and I was feeling proud of the, the, uh, the IET spiritual family that God has made me part of, that, I mean, who in this world will think about coming to this place and share the gospel? <laughs> IET missionary, I'm actually promoting IET ministry here. <laughs> uh, I, I'm just joking. But I praise God for people who receive that burden for people. You know, it's not about sharing gospel to people who come across your path. But what I have learned from IET missionaries about their commitment to share the gospel, to make Christ known into unknown people and unknown region is that we are not going to wait to see people coming across our narrow path or wide path, we are going into places, finding out people when Christ's name has not gone before and we are going to share Christ and so that they can take this mission forward. And it's not, the job is not just limited to one generation in IT and BCG, we believe this is, our God is a generational father and this mission is generation, one generation to the next generation and following generation. But I praise God for, for, for the missionaries of IET who are continuously and working really hard to make him known to the remotest place that I could have ever traveled in, in my recent time period. There is another story of a, a, a mid-aged lady, sister actually, now following Christ is not easy as probably uh, sometime I can, I can probably think but uh, this particular lady taught me a, a lesson. It's not easy. Following Christ is not easy. You may have to go through a very, very difficult time, very darkest moment of your life, but still staying strong and committed to make him known is something that I learned from this lady and I actually was encouraged. She inspired me. It, this, this lady, uh, was only person who came to know Christ and accept Christ from his family, from a family, married, two children. And I was there having conversation with her in one of the houses that we visited. And I was inquiring about her and she was telling, she was emotional. And she said, I am now living alone. I said, what happened? Can I just know what happened? She said, well, I accepted Christ and my family actually asked me to vacate the place. Husband threw her out. The children also rejected. So children were not allowed to meet her because of her faith. She came to another city where we were meeting, another town or, and the village where we were meeting. And I asked her, I mean, why you could have stayed with the husband and still continue to be in a faith? She said, no, my husband made it very clear. Either I choose the family, husband, or I choose Christ. And she said, I chose Christ. It wasn't easy. My husband, my two children, leaving them was not at all easy. But I don't know, whenever I sit and I look up to him, and I cannot do it anything but follow Christ Jesus. And in this new place, she has lost the family. And when I say lost, I didn't mean that they are no more. They are very much there, but lost in terms of relationship. Son used to call, talk to her, but later he stopped calling her. The doctor used to talk to her till very recent but recently doctor also stopped calling her. So no communication with the family, with her own husband, son and daughter. And she is now sharing Christ, making Christ known to a place where she is working just to make sure that she is able to survive. Making him known is not easy. Sometimes it can be difficult, but how much we are committed is a question that I many times ask. When I travel to these places, towns, villages, especially the interior villages, mountain villages, or tribal villages, I'm reminded of Revelation 7, 9, 10. 
After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from every type, people, group, language, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out, loud voice, salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. I believe, my friends, that our life is worth making him known to the unknown places. Our life is worth making Christ known to the people who do not know Christ. You know, so the question is what we can do. Yes, we know that we have to be a part. We have to join. And it's a joyful, it's a privilege to join the mission that God is doing, to join the work of the Lord that God is doing at the larger, spec, uh, larger realm. So what can I do? I wanted to encourage everyone, every my elder brothers and sisters sitting here. If you are wondering what you can do, and I'm sure that you have the number of years of experience knowing Christ and also in your, in your life as experience in this world, in case if you have any question, how can I be part of this mission? How can I be, how can I join what God is doing in your community or outside the community or anywhere? It can be anywhere. What can I do? I want to just give a couple of points and before I close this message. And I, I think it's, it's always good to start with prayer. You know, once I learned, somebody taught me, I, I, someone asked me, do you have the burden for people? I said, no, because I didn't have that kind of burden when I started, you know, well, in, my, in, my, in my early time period in, in mid-20s. And someone taught me, maybe you can pray that God will give you burden. And it did, did happen. And I started to pray and I started to, to have the burden for people. Maybe we can start for, with prayer for burden for people. You know, it's very easy to love people that we know, but it's very difficult to love whom we do not know. Love, the love of Christ, that will make us love other people who we do not know. Probably we have not seen, probably we have never met each other, but we can still have that love and burden for them that Lord, allow, help me to, 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 to be a blessing, to help them to, to so that they also come to know that kind of love and burden. And then second, seek God, ask him to lead you to play your part your significant part in his mission. Remember, it is God's mission. I mean, there are many Bible references, but the famous one that we all know is Matthew 28, 19, 20, and Acts 1, 8. It is God's mission. So what can I do, Lord? How can I part? See God. Allow God to lead you. It's not just what I think is good for me to do, but it is what God thinks for me to do. Allow God to lead you. In maybe it's small ways. I mean, I do not have to start the ministry to by starting a preaching and sharing the gospel. I can, God can use me in various manners, but seek God and allow God to, you know, to do things that God wants you to do. Identify the God-given ability. That's the third point. I, want, I, 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 I have a desire to do something, but what can I do? Identify the God-given ability. How can I be part? Maybe it may be helping a people, maybe just you know, visiting people, encouraging them, maybe singing in a church, maybe anything. Be available with God has given in your hand. Be available it, with God, what God has given in your hand in the community. You can start with the community. You can start with the neighborhood. And God will lead you one step at a time and will lead you further. And then next, be involved. Get involved in what God is doing as God leads you. If you are led by the Spirit for a person, to, to, to make Christ known to a particular person, about that person or a people group or, or, a, or a community or a neighborhood or even a nation. Who knows, God can use you. You know, God will use you. God can use you to, to, to impact a nation even. I suggest that let's start learning about them. To know about them. 
and then build that connection and relationship. If I if I if I have a if I have a burden for a particular say a city called let's say for example say called Bangalore, I definitely would love to and like to know more about Bangalore, and then start praying about Bangalore, and then building try to connect and relationship with bank you know people in Bangalore. So uh, uh, allow God to use you to learn more about them, and then start connecting with them whatever way God leads you. And once you have developed that relationship and started to getting involved in that, through that relationship, inspire other people, share and encourage other people about what you are doing and what God is doing as much as you know. Inspire others, encourage other, and finally mobilize. You know, it's a wonderful way to, to be a part of what God is doing is mobilize for the continuity and momentum that God is actually is, is on, the, on the move. Keep mobilizing prayer partners for the gospel work among them. We can, we can mobilize prayer partners. We can, we can ask, you know, my, our friends, actually, our relations, people in, the, in, our, in, in our community, hey, this is what I am doing. This is what God is doing. Let's just pray about this, what God is doing. I don't think anybody will say, no, I, I don't want to pray. Then there'll be many people who would love to pray uh, for what you are doing and for God is doing through you. So yes, we can start with prayer. We can definitely seek God. We can identify our God-given ability to get involved in what God is doing and then inspire other people, inspire the next generation, inspire the following generation, inspire children, inspire youth, inspire colleagues, inspire people in our friendship, inspire people in our family so that they can also see and experience what God is doing through you and through other people and mobilize prayer partners. Mobilize prayer partners. Prayer is an important part in, in what God is doing in this country and in this world. So is there anything that is stopping you? I encourage you to pray that God may release those hesitations or anything that is stopping you. And I encourage you that I pray that God will help you to say as the book of Ashaya, the prophet says, here I am, send me. And when I say send me, I'm not saying that you start going to different places. Uh, well, God can take you different places, but here I am, use me, Lord. Send me, can help me to get involved in what you are doing. Jesus prepared 12 for the task of mission after his life. Today, the body of Christ needs you to take his mission to your respective places, your respective community, and to the end of the world. And this is what God is promising. And this is the promise I want to leave with you while you continue to pray about making him known in the community. In Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And he'll be with us. Give your heart, mind, and life to serve him in your places and to the ends of the world. It is on us for the present time and for the future generation to make him known to the world. God bless you with these verses. Thank you, Brother Jace. Thank you. Shall we pray about this before we move on to the, the next song? If anyone else wants to pray, please feel free to pray. Lord, I thank you for the work of IT, for the churches that are planted in India, for the burden that is held by so many to go to different places. The, the vision to know how to do it, Lord, and the commitment to go to, to go whatever the cost. And Lord, I thank you for the inspiration of the many brothers and sisters involved in that work. And Lord, I pray for us here, and sometimes we wonder what can we do, and 
how, how can we do this, that or the other? And maybe we can't get to as many places as we could at one time, Lord. But we thank you that you've still got a role for each one of us to play. And Lord, I pray that we will pray. That you will give us a, a burden on our hearts. And that we will go and go in your strength and do what you have called us to do. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jan's going to lead us in a song which fits very well here, I think. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, living breath of God. Putting the words up, Jim.
Jace, is there um, anything particularly you'd like us to pray for, for you and for um, IET this morning? I think it's just, uh, yeah, it's just not IET, but uh, in whole, uh, the ministry uh, that is happening in India, the situation is getting a change uh, almost every day. Things are getting difficult, uh, you know, the, with uh, lots of opposition and persecution happening around. Uh, it can't share gospel as we used to before with all freedom, not in every place. Uh, though we praise God for still have the freedom to worship the Lord in churches and some places is still very much open. Uh, but there are places where our believers are persecuted and beaten up. Uh, the pastors, missionaries are beaten up and persecuted. Uh, the police will come and ask for, you know, harassment, taking up to the police station and uh, having them sit there for hours uh, for no reason, just harassing them and to discourage them to continue with the prayer meetings in places. So things are actually getting very, very difficult nowadays. So I just wanted the community, the church to keep uh, our nation in prayer. And of course, the ministry of IET and BCG uh, in all 20 states here in India. So that would I really appreciate your prayer support uh, so that we continue to, uh, in spite of all these challenges, uh, we can continue to take the gospel to the unreached places, continue to plant churches that we are committed. That's, uh, as I shared in the message, that's a central call for IIT and BCG, to take gospel to the unreached people and to plant a church there. Just not planting, but to make sure that church is established and the church will continue uh, with the mission work in their respective places. So yes, I would really appreciate, uh, please do pray that we be faithful and what God has called us to, and uh, we be able to see uh, wonderful things that God has, uh, God is doing in this nation. And we strongly believe that in spite of all these challenges, uh, God is still sovereign, and he is in absolute authority and control of all the situation uh, that we see here. And we still are committed to continue to the, continue the work that God has given and called us to for. Thank you, brother. Lord, we've often talked in this place about the persecution that is faced by people sharing your gospel in India. And Lord, we confess that sometimes we remember to pray and sometimes we don't. But Lord, this morning we want to lift our brothers and sisters in India, whether in IET or in other missions, who are going out with the message of your gospel to the far-flung places in, this land, in that land and sometimes facing incredible persecution when they go. Lord, we pray that you will continue to encourage them and to strengthen them, to give them your holy boldness alongside your wisdom, Lord, that they will continue to be able to bring glory to you and to spread your name, to spread the message of your salvation, that people might truly turn to, to you and know your gift of eternal life. Know you and go on to tell others about you. Lord, we really lift them before you this morning and we ask for your blessing and your strengthening for your church in India. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Jim, can I just share one more incident that happened recently? Is that okay? Yeah. During one of, our, uh, one of my visits to uh, the mission field, I... After the meeting, I was meeting a couple of people actually came to meet me and I was told that they are, they were young, young youth actually, quite young people. Uh, so they were, I was told that they were from mountain village and they were actually thrown out of the village. So when I asked about and inquired more about what happened, I was told that this uh, four family, 
I mean, during the ministry work, one of our IT missionary took the gospel, shared there in that place where they never knew Christ before. And then uh, one person accepted Christ and uh, gradually it in, uh, four family actually came to Christ and decided to commit their life for Christ and accept him as a first savior. At the same time, I mean, I'm sharing in a very short, uh, briefly, uh, but it was a span of a couple of months and they've continuously opposed and uh, persecuted by other village people. Uh, they will make, they, they, they tried to make their life very difficult uh, by, by not allowing them to, you know, go to their field, where, which is their only livelihood. And, uh, and to the, 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 the last thing that they did was quite, quite uh, 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 kind of painful, where they were, they were asked not to take water from the only well in the village. Now we know that without water, it's not possible to survive. And uh, but they said that we will allow them you to take water if you disown Christ. Uh, you know, it's a matter of life and death, survival. Uh, and however, they all these four families said, you even if you don't allow us to take water from the well, we will not leave Christ. And they said, then you'll have to, you know, you'll be excommunicated from. They said, we are ready to be thrown out of the village, but we will not leave Christ. And they were actually, you know, chased into the villages, actually, oh, sorry, jungles nearby. So they spent a couple of days in jungle, you know, finding and trying to make their shelter, but they were, they were actually uh, chased from all these places, wherever they tried to put up their uh, their, their actual shelter. And finally, they went to a very deep jungle. They stayed there for a couple of days. Somehow, uh, one of the person came in, came out and be in touch with the IET pastor. And he started to go there to, because he felt that it's his responsibility to provide the pastoral, not only pastoral care, but also the care that they required, the need, shelter, clothes, everything. And when I was there, they wanted to, they, they, they tried to put up a very temporary shelter, but they wanted some help so that they can construct a small temporary house. And uh, it was a joyful time for us that we were able to help the four families to construct small houses in, uh, in the area in a deep jungle where they can stay safe. And our pastor is still continuing to provide the ministry and the pastoral care to them and going to them and encouraging them with the word of God. And they are, commit, they, are commit, they are committed to stay strong in faith and following Christ. So this is the kind of uh, ministry that we see, uh, the, the, the work that Lord is doing in those places. So I praise God for IET missionaries in spite of, and praise God for, the believers in the church, the new believers, they have just come to know Christ, but their faith is amazing. The commitment to Christ is amazing. So I, I just wanted to thank all of you who continually pray for IET ministry and for IET missionaries. I really appreciate on behalf of IET leaders, I, I extend my appreciation and also gratitude for your prayerful support. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Should we go on to pray for situations um, a little bit closer to home? Lord, we thank you for your love for your children all over the world. And Lord, um, as the subject of our news this week has sort of changed from um, the royal funeral and everything to the economic situation, Lord, we remember that there are many people who are uh, currently newly bereaved Lord and we pray for them and pray for each one that they will know your peace and your comfort at this time people all over the world in those circumstances and Lord we just think of people close to our congregation at the moment from 
Barbara Tyrrell, who's really very unwell in Sibertoft at the moment. For Rob, Heather's brother. Lord, for um, family members of people here in our church today and for people who are here who really need your touch at the moment. Lord, we pray that they will know your presence and uh, the peace of your presence and the healing that you bring. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we lift governments before you. Our government, the government in India, who are responsible for things that seem to be run straight in the face of your gospel. But, Lord, we pray for them because you instruct us to pray for them. And, Lord, we pray that uh, you will guide governments into making wise and godly decisions in all of the issues that are faced at the moment in this in this world. Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray for Brother Jace and his family and we thank you for having um, him with us here this morning on Zoom. And we'll pray that you'll continue to strengthen all of them in the work that they're doing in India and that you'll draw them closer and closer to yourself. We ask it in Jesus' name. Is there anything else? Anybody, is there anything? Would anyone else like to pray or ask us to pray about something? Okay, Jan and I are away from tomorrow until a week on Saturday, so we're not around um, for that time. We've got um, Dave. I won't bother sharing the screen again at this point. We've got Dave Andrews coming to speak next week, and. I need to connect with Felix yeah. on the practicalities thereof, and uh, so that's that's uh, that's great. Um, so um, people can decide during the week who's there for the Bible study and whether to go ahead with it. You can sort that out yourselves, um, but that's lovely. And we will um, look forward to seeing you again when we come back um, in a couple of weeks' time. So um, in the meantime. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, the harvest supper went really well. Yeah. Yeah. Jean, could we have there is a redeemer? Is that all right? Or unless anyone else has a hymn on their heart or song on their heart. Anybody? No? I'm too quiet and you couldn't hear me, I know. <laughs> Sorry, Jan said she couldn't, didn't hear what I said, which is unusual. She usually complains I'm too loud. Yes. <laughs> there is a redeemer then. Jean's going to play it for us.